Hi, welcome to Radio Axiom. This is session 18. You can find us at radioaxiom.com, Facebook slash Axiom Sound System. We're also on Instagram at Radio Axiom. This is a live video streaming and audio visual experience. Uh, I'm here with Bill Wesley. He's going to be playing for us today. One, two, three, four, five, six yes, instruments? Six instruments. <laughs> this one is the most sophisticated. That is the most all. sophisticated instrument, indeed. Yeah, this one is going to lead it off because this was <laughs> the first instrument that I learned to play. Awesome. <laughs> well, except they started out with record players. My mother tells mm. me when I was a kid, like yeah. I would experiment with them. Oh, cool. When I was like three. Yeah. But, you know, later on I got this thing. <laughs> and with this I started imitating the blues. Okay. So like... <laughs> That's that. awesome. <laughs> and, and that led me to realize that music is what your voice does. Mm. And that when you play a musical instrument, what you're doing is you're doing the same thing as puppetry. You put on a puppet and you make it dance and you make it has a face and you yeah. make it have an emotion. Mm. And in, in probably among tribes, people in the mm -hmm. ancient world, all over the world, that was like shamanism. People got all scared and freaked out yeah. that you could make this thing alive when yeah. it was dead. Huh. And then uh, part of that was to take something else that was dead and make it have a voice and speak. Mm -hmm. By the way, that's, this, this was part of African shamanistic tradition mm -hmm. because <laughs> you could have a different <laughs> voice with this. Yeah. So, so basically, musical instrumentation is sonic puppetry. You're, this is dead, this is dead, this tree's been cut down, this metal is dead. But this thing makes sounds like it were alive and expressing emotions if I manipulate mm -hmm. it. Mm -hmm. So, and, and it's not all, it's not actually dead, it's alive with the vibration, and it talks back to me. I want yeah. this, it does that. It's mm -hmm. a conversation between us. Absolutely. It's always a conversation between the artist and the instrument, and people fail to realize that instruments might not be optimum. And mm. they just assume that what they first encounter is optimum without question. Mm. And sometimes they question, but then since it's a majority thing, they go with it anyway. Yeah. But most will never question. They assume mm. it's optimum, so they miss the opportunity. I was telling somebody the other day, if you have a sense of wonder, you can invent. But if you don't, then you can't. <laughs> I mean, that's where creativity comes from, is a yeah. sense of wonder of, oh, wow, look at that. Yeah. You know, and this is all about how you would redesign music if nobody told you how to how do to it. How to do it. So describe these a little bit more for us, please. Um. Well, the idea of these things is, and, and this just turned itself off. Yeah. It did, it's not because it doesn't like me. It's just automatic. You touched it, it and it yeah, turned it off, so I don't know. <laughs> It's, uh, it, it, the, the idea here is, is that the closer any locations are, the more harmonious they are. Hmm. The more they work together, and the more distant they are, the less they do. Hmm. So if they're up close, they're all pretty. But if they're more distant, they're like, they're harsh. Okay. So the idea is, is that what you're seeing here Normally we can see melody. Everybody knows a guitarist goes da 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 You can see the melody along the string. I can just look at what he's doing. I know what's going on. If I've looked at a lot of guitarists and I'm not even a guitarist, I could probably turn the sound off and say what he was doing just by looking. Yeah. But not so chording. Not unless I'm an experienced guitarist, yeah. but what I mean is yeah. I can't see what he's doing. The chords change on a keyboard especially. It's just yeah. insane. There's no, there's no way to tell what's going on harmony-wise. Unless, you're, you're, unless you're trained in that. Unless you're trained, unless you spend 10 years and you can be self-trained, that might be even better. But you are going to have to struggle. I did. Yeah. I started out about 10 going, what the hell with the keyboard? <laughs> and, and, and thinking, why is it yeah. arranged like this? What's going on? And I started listening to the intervals and what they felt like. To hell with what the teacher said they yeah. were. What they felt like was all I cared about. And that's how I developed this. Okay. So this is a system that takes what you feel like and doesn't get in the way of it. 
with a lot of theory, uh, theory and assumption. Yeah. Mm -hmm. On the other hand, if you're way into theory and you want to spend your life perfecting your, it, yeah, you'll never reach the end of this. You live a hundred lifetimes. <laughs> you won't even touch what, what can be possible with yeah. this thing. And so, so, you know, it's like a huge, I mean, I can play, huge, this, this thing can't even play the chords that I can play manually. This is, this right here is like a, um, what is it, five times, it's 30 note chord. No other instrument lets me manually play a 30 note yeah. chord. That's huh. not possible. So this thing is letting me control what amounts to a symphony of content. I can take what took Beethoven two years to write out for a hundred different instruments and do it right now in real time. Just like yeah. say Jimi Hendrix jamming or some yeah. singer creating a song in real time. I mean I can basically have the orchestra follow me in real time. Just by, you know, this, like I was saying, the littlest thing that you do. You know? Yeah. I can just, nobody, you can't do that on a piano. You can't do that on anything else. <laughs> Not, and, yeah. And this can access any sound. So basically, in order to impress the world with this idea, I built these acoustic instruments to show yeah. that it applies to everything. Acoustic as well as electronic, to all keyboards. Not that, you know, I'm trying to do away with the keyboard. I mean, if you know how to play beautiful music on a keyboard, then you won and you have something and nobody can take that away. I'm just saying that this is something that you're gonna go into realms you'll never touch on a keyboard mm -hmm. and you'll be able to master them and, and yeah. put them into feeling. And that's sort of what I mean. The feelings show geometric shapes on here that you can't see on the piano. Mm -hmm. Like, how do I know if a thing's all happy or sad, major or minor on the piano by looking? I can't tell by looking. On here, I can tell by looking. If I'm holding a note, if I hit notes over here, it's going to be sad. Oh. If I hit notes over here, it's going to be happy. So you've categorized these like major, minor, or exactly. Is it... If I'm holding this note, everything over here is major, and everything over there is minor. Mm -hmm. So let's say I want to go all minor key. Oh, I don't like that. Let's say I want to go major key now. So I'm just going to use the same hand as a demo. So basically. And this is the thing, these are unisons. Those are the same note. I've got the whole keyboard right there mm. under this hand and the whole keyboard again here and I can move them like this into any key signature and it's always the same thing in every key. So what I mean by that for people who wouldn't know is if I'm doing some crazy thing, I can move it and it changes the overall pitch mm -hmm. so I can go like. It's the same shape. Every chord, everything I do, I learn a thing once, I can m just move it to play it at any other pitch. Mm -hmm. That's not true of a keyboard. Yeah. This is literally thousands of times simpler. <laughs> and I'm not exaggerating, actually. It looks much more complex, though. It looks more complex because you're looking at these buttons. Yeah. Let's say you can't see these buttons, which you don't need to see them. If you yeah. feel them, you don't need to see them. You're looking at 36 keys that are in straight order and alternate color, it's much simpler than a keyboard. Mm. And also mm. on a keyboard, if I did this, if I did something like this, mm. right? Mm -hmm. That would be... Yeah, that was just a scale. You could do that with two fingers. Right, and I can do it here. <laughs> okay, yeah. do that on your keyboard, you know. No thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and then you have a heart attack. You know, no, the thing is, is that you can't. Yeah. And, and when you start, 
I've been playing this for 20 years. And the thing is, is the nuances of the way that you slide. There's 10,000 different little nuances of how to slide in. Mm -hmm. When you do zero sliding on the keyboard, unless maybe the back of your fingernail, if you're Jerry Lee yeah. Lewis across the way. <laughs> but I mean, sliding on this, I might not ever go. For an entire piece, it might all be. Save. <laughs> Save us some, save us some. Yes. <laughs> Can you tell me a little bit about where these instruments are used around the world um, in production? We've made around, I think around 400 of them or something, 500, mm -hmm. and they go almost all to very to top artists. Mm -hmm. Such Taylor as? Taylor Swift. Imogen Heap was oh, the main yeah. one. And I met her a bunch of times. She uses this instrument. She uses uh, this instrument. She wanted this yeah. instrument, but I've been trying to get the powers that be to mass produce it. Mm. The thing is, is that you're used by Hollywood musicians all over the place. You can't even hardly turn on an ad or a movie mm. or a TV show and not hear these instruments. But people don't see them, so they don't know. Interesting. And they use them because they're emotionally expressive. The emotion forms geometries you can see. You can see the emotion in a guitar string, too. You know, but it's yeah. like a simple emotion. The higher you go, the more tense it gets, yeah. and the lower you go, the more relaxed. Well, that's a really simple Tom and Jerry view of the world, yeah. right? Tense, 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 relax, relax, relax. Yeah. Yeah. Up and down and up and down. That's most of our music most mm -hmm. of the time. It's very two-dimensional. It's it very, flat. it's actually one-dimensional. Mm -hmm. The keyboard has these notes, but it's really a one-dimensional line, like yeah. a one-dimensional string. This is the two-dimensional one. Gotcha. And so this is a field, this is really the ultimate way, and I can prove this mathematically, this is where the math mm -hmm. does come in. I can prove mathematically this is the most coherent way. If you were to take things that make sounds and order them in any other pattern, they would support each other less. This is a thing that takes vibrating elements and you put them in this pattern, and it magically supports the vibration better than any other arrangement on earth. Now that seems to me ha would have much more to do with many, many things and not just music. Mm. And yes. the fact that I'm seeing emotion in geometrical shapes suggests to me that this can tell me how mm. emotion works. Mm. And almost no one is taking that seriously, but if, if music, instead of us thinking we map emotion onto music, yeah. what if music actually taps into universal real emotion? Yeah. If this is the most coherent pattern, that means this pattern can tell us more about emotion than neurology. I mean, literally, we can look, because neurology doesn't know what questions to ask half the time. But here, we would know what questions to ask. Like, there's a correlation between pain and pleasure. Close together, pleasure, distant pain. But that's all learned anyway. Like, if I think something sounds dissonant, that's because I've learned for it to sound no, so. No, no, it's fact it sounds dissonant. This is like bitter. You don't learn the taste of cinnamon or coffee or chocolate. Those are inherent. Everybody everywhere tastes the same thing, but they do have different reactions. Yeah. Some people spit the chocolate out and go, that's poison. We learn to monitor what we perceive. Mm -hmm. Chocolate tastes bitter to you now. If you got amnesia and you put chocolate in your mouth, it tastes the same, but you go, because you go, that's bitter, it's poison. Mm -hmm. We've learned to moderate our responses mm -hmm. and pay attention to some things and not to others. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean that the thing itself is different. That doesn't mean I can be conditioned to see blue where you see red. You know, we could, could, we could, we could. reverse the words. Yeah. It's a different thing. Now, what you're saying is a majority view. Or if you're colorblind, then maybe. If you're colorblind, it turns out that you're one in two million individuals okay. because all colorblind people are color impaired but not colorblind. Okay. You know, they're not totally yeah. blind to color. Yes. Yeah. There are various degrees of impaired, which, by the way, if you fix the, 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 the damage, mm -hmm. very often they can see color mm -hmm. again. And this has been done by, you know, some of the modern operations they've yeah. done where they've restored the color vision. Mm -hmm. So the thing is, if you think about it, where does emotion come from? I mean, people don't think about mm. this. Where does it come from? And where, why does red look exciting? Because they've done a lot of research. Red is kind of alarming. It, it, it picks up metabolism. Mm -hmm. And why is blue calming? 
even against conditioning. Yeah, yeah, I could be conditioned to be calm in a red room by being given yeah. drugs or, or fear a blue room because I'm hit. But yeah. the, the color itself has an inherent response. It's shown to work across the board and across culture. How's that happening? It's a survival instinct. I think it comes from that we have, it's, well, I can't even explain it. The thing is, we think the whole universe is dead and that life is a miracle that can't be explained. But that's not our only option. We can see the whole universe as alive and death is a miracle that can't be explained. Mm. Yeah. And that's more the way I'm taking it. I think our emotion, that evolution, by the way, I'm going to go on record with this, Darwin agrees with me. Emotion, he said it specifically, emotion is, evolution is driven by emotion. Okay. And I think what's happening is, is our sensations are made of our emotions. Mm -hmm. They're literally a translation of our basic emotions. Mm -hmm. So red, I'm going to risk it here, tear me apart. I think red is a manifestation in sensation of the emotion of fear. Mm -hmm. So it's alarming. It, it, it automatically calls fear to mind. The problem that people have is they think fear is something bad. Fe no mm -hmm. emotion is bad or good. It depends yeah. on when it arises and in con what context and with what other emotions. Yeah. If fear were bad, I'd never get on a roller coaster. I love roller coasters. Yeah. Fear is good when it helps you. It's yeah. only bad when you fail. If I'm afraid of the bull and I'm running, that's good. If I, yeah. Especially if I jump over the fence. However, if the bull tramples <laughs> me, that's, that's bad. <laughs> then I have a bad association with fear. Yeah, that's when yeah. you get trampled instead of, yeah, that's when you escape. Mm. So, so the idea is red, that every sensation is a translation of emotion because we can't be directly conscious of the outside world. Mm -hmm. we can, and I have a specific definition of exactly how emotion works and how it results in evolution. Mm. And this whole thing turns out to segue and square perfectly with the array music theory system, that basically the, mu the reason this has geometry that you can see the feelings of is this thing is addressing your feelings. Mm. And not in a cultural way, in an yeah. inherent way. You put any child in front of this and they're going to gain rapid understanding of music. Mm. The opposite happens in front of yeah. a keyboard. Yeah, confusion. Confusion, <laughs> which I have to say the authorities and power make billions off of yeah. because they have to train you around not only the worst design in human history as far as I'm concerned, <laughs> which is the keyboard because, <laughs> well, because music is so simple and so organized. It's not chaotic. It's not random. And yet yeah. we put this thing. And if you think mm -hmm. about it, when a person plays music, like if I'm typing on a typewriter one key at a time, how hard I hit doesn't matter. We think that's complex, yeah. typing a novel. But when I'm typing music, if I type up to all the keys on the, on, the, on the thing at once. I'm typing in whole paragraphs instantly. Mm -hmm. I, the, 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 the force that I hit the key totally matters. The exact timings totally matter. It's the most complex mm -hmm. thing a human animal does. And that's why I say the keyboard's the worst design in history. Because it takes the most complex things humans have ever done and bollocks it all up with a huge impediment that holds people back from mm -hmm. music so only 3% of the people consider themselves musical. Yeah. If this were out there as a MIDI controller, well, right now, lots of people consider themselves musical. They push a sequencer button. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I don't like that answer. Sequencers don't have emotions to express. Hmm. Me sitting around secondhand emotions of some machine that doesn't even know what it's doing is pathetic. Talk, I mean, really, you know, it's like eating Campbell's soup only for the rest of your life, you know? That's not music. And the thing is, I don't say that sequence music is not music. As long as the guy's there changing it, you know, engaging yeah. with it actively. But when you let the machine just tell you who you are and what you're doing, which is what's happening all too often, then, you know, you've just missed the whole point of music. Yeah. But the corporations have just pocketed another fool's dollars is basically it. Mm. So, you know, I just think this thing circumvents that whole edifice. Basically, yeah. get these out to people, and they'll be playing music manually without a computer's help, and then the computer can be the assistant rather than the master. How do we do it? How do we get them out there? 
We have to somehow get around the massive complacency, the massive will not to hear, not to understand, to believe in what is so that we don't have to feel uncomfortable about it. Mm. You know, everyone wants to be comfortable and happy with the knowledge that they have, and they don't want to think there's some knowledge out there that they don't have that they need to learn. You know, but in this case, it's like, okay, yeah, you have a little knowledge out there you don't have that you'll have to learn. It'll take you about an hour, and then you'll fly like a bird in music for the rest of your life. <laughs> You're being a fool if yeah. you don't spend this energy. Yeah. And I'm trying to get people to understand it. I can't even get past the sound point. Oh. You know, everybody goes, oh, that's an interesting sound. And I'm like, uh. no, it's not about the sound. It's about this emotion theory, understanding music, being able to create and compose, not having a world of players, but of mm -hmm. literal composers who create the future. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I think we could talk about this for days, yes, months, we years. Well, no, actually, but we, we got to get, get started with your actual playing, which I'm so excited to hear. Thank you so much for coming, Bill. Yes, you're welcome. <laughs> I'll, I'll start with the first instrument that right. uh, uh, I... Uh, I uh, Build. Okay. Just because it's so compact and was so easy. This is the Harmony Array in Bira.
goes. Dude. Dude. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to get the whole world addicted to this thing. Oh, man. Although, Are you addicted to it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Definitely. You should see all the videos. I mean, seriously, if there were any justice in the world, I mean, I didn't even do that well right now. <laughs> But, I mean, I have some things that I did where if anybody, there were any justice in the world, they would go, yeah, that's one of the most virtuoso things I've ever seen, period. How long has it been around? Uh, this particular thing has been around since about 2000. Okay. And I promoted, I took it with, on tour with Vaginals okay. starting about 2005 or mid-2000s. I started touring. It, it, it just blows me away that it hasn't I mean, I didn't know about it. I, uh, it well, seems like a, it should catch on, you well, know? Well, to be honest, there's, there's some people that do know about it. There was an accordion that was arranged like this, but it only had that many buttons. Okay. And that's not enough. It's not enough buttons. Well, it's not. It's like with this system, yeah. that's not enough. You can't, do, you, know, you can't do anything with that yeah. many notes. You can't even play in all the key signatures. Hmm. To give you an example, the idea of this thing is that even from then, this is a patent yeah. was granted in the 1800s, was you could play the same thing in any key signature without change. Mm -hmm. So if you do Mary Had a Little Lamb like this here, mm -hmm. you just move that to over here and do that, and now mm -hmm. it's Mary Had a Little Lamb but higher or lower. Yeah. So here, and in any direction, in any two-dimensional direction, it stays the same. But if you only have this many keys, well, that's all the notes. I, yeah. I don't even have room to play in all the key signatures with that many, and so it's it's... It's like inventing the wheel and making a one-wheeled cart, <laughs> you know? A uh, wheelbarrow. Or, 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 or a unicycle. It's <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah, okay, here okay. you go, a unicycle. But, yeah, you yeah. need about five years just to stay up on it. Yeah, yeah. Thing. So what you yeah. just played for us, was that all improvised, or do you have, like, no, a structure I, I, you're following? No, I, I, I did a, a song out here, which I messed up, and then I improvised some, some solutions. Yeah. Because uh, I get nervous sometimes when I'm doing songs, and yeah. sometimes not. But I'm sweating, and I don't You're like pretty sweating. sweaty. Yeah, and, and, <laughs> and, and, and it's distracting me. And and and, the thing and I distracted you with the lights over there. I'm sorry yeah, about that. Your, I know. I we needed to light you a little bit more. But the thing is, is then then you know the the, the thing is, is that oh, what were we talking about just a second ago? Oh, do you improvise, or is there a structure to your playing? Most of what I did on here was, uh, you know, that was a song, mm -hmm. and then I did a song on here, and I didn't do, I did improvisation on both of these, okay. and the organ, and both of these were, were songs at the start, and then improvised gotcha. afterwards. Okay. I mean, I like to do set songs, I just, uh, well, they make me nervous when I'm doing it yeah. by myself. Yeah. You know, yeah, it's like I understand. there's a lot to... Mess up over, yeah, but nobody knows if you messed up though. If you're by yourself, well, I guess we better break all this stuff. Down. Oh man! All right, yeah, I guess we better do it. Thank you, Bill. Thank take you so much. Off. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> Thanks well. again for coming out. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Next up, we got Paymar. It's a sonic exploration of Dylan Lee Brown. See you guys soon. <laughs>